Hey there, Globetrotters! Ready to make the most of two days in Malaga? Buckle up, because I'm about to take you on an epic 48-hour journey through this Spanish paradise. And make sure you stick around till the end, because I've got some secret tips that'll make your trip unforgettable. Let's dive into Malaga! Day 1, the Alcazaba. Ready to kick off your first day in Malaga with something legendary? Let's hit up the Alcazaba. Picture this, an 11th century palace built by the Moors, not just a fancy house, but also a fortress. Back in the day, it was like the epicenter for the big bosses of Malaga, keeping the city safe from invaders. When you stroll through, you'll see cool patios, courtyards with relaxing fountains, and some pretty sweet gardens. Oh, and did I mention, it's on a hill, so as you're walking around, make sure to pause and check out those awesome views of the sea and the port. Trust me, you'll want to snap a pic for your Insta. For the history buffs among you, there's a small museum showcasing some rad Moorish pottery. And if you really want the inside scoop on this place, consider booking a guided tour. You'll not only explore the Alcazaba, but also get to see some ancient Roman theater ruins. Score! Now for some pro traveler tips. If you're thinking of visiting the nearby Gibraltar Castle too, grab a combined ticket. It's a deal at five and a half euros. And for those on a tight budget, swing by the Alcazaba after 2 p.m. on a Sunday and you're in for free. By the way, ever wondered what Alcazaba means? It's an Arabic word for fortress. So next time you're in Andalusia and you hear that name, you'll know you're near another epic fortress, like the one in Granada. All right, Wanderers, that's your must-visit spot in Malaga for today. Gibraltar Castle Starting at the Alcazaba, you can kick off a cool hike up to the castle. It's like walking through an epic movie scene with all the greenery around and the city views as your backdrop. Heads up though, it's a bit of an uphill adventure. If you're not feeling the trek, no worries. Just hop on bus number 35 from Avenida de Cervantes, easy peasy. Now, a quick history bite. This castle isn't just any old castle. Built back in the 14th century, it was like the bodyguard for the Alcazaba. It had everything, a place for soldiers and even a lighthouse. And fun fact, Gibraltar basically translates to Mountain of Light. How cool is that? There's a spot at the entrance that takes you on a little time travel trip around the castle's past. But let me tell you, the real magic is when you stand atop these walls and soak in the views. Malaga below, the sea stretching out, and on a super clear day, you might even spot the Strait of Gibraltar. And here's a pro tip. Head there just as the sun's saying goodbye. Watching Malaga light up from that vantage point, total insta-worthy. The Roman Theater in Malaga When you visit Malaga, you're diving deep into ancient Rome. Right at the base of the Alcazaba lies Malaga's oldest treasure, a first-century Roman theater. Built by Emperor Augustus, this theater was the go-to spot for performances for 200 years before it got turned into a cemetery. It was forgotten, and parts of it were used for the Alcazaba until its rediscovery in 1951. Today, they host outdoor shows right there. It's free to enter, and if you decide on a guided tour of the Alcazaba, they'll take you to the Roman theater too. So, for a mix of Spain and Rome, Malaga's the place to be. The Cathedral of the Incarnation You know that massive structure you can spot from almost anywhere in the city? Yup, that's it. It's towering high up there, making it one of the tallest in Andalusia. Get this, they started building it way back in the 16th century, right on top of an old mosque. Today, all that's left of the mosque is this super chill courtyard filled with orange trees. Imagine chilling under the shade of those trees after a day of exploring. But here's a fun twist, the cathedral isn't even finished. They ran out of money, so it's rocking just one bell tower instead of the two they had planned. The locals? They've got a fun nickname for it. La Manquita, or the One-Armed. Pretty cool, right? Feeling adventurous? Challenge yourself to climb those 200 steps all the way to the top. Trust me, the view is worth it. A crazy awesome 360 degree view of Malaga, the Alcazaba, and Gibraltar Castle. And before you leave, don't forget to check out the inside. We're talking jaw-dropping ceilings, colorful stained glass windows, and an organ with 4,000 pipes. 
But hey, if you're thinking, nah, walking's not my jam, and I want to see everything today, then I've got just the thing for you. The Hop On Hop Off Bus Tour. And here's a pro tip for you. When you're booking your spot, look out for the Malaga Experience card option. This isn't just a bus ticket, my friends. With this card, you get free entry to most of Malaga's museums. Oh, and did I mention you'll also score a seat at the Flamenco Show? Talk about making the most of your day in Malaga. Day 2. Museums to Visit in Malaga Welcome to day two of our Malaga adventure. If you're still wondering where to head next, don't sweat it, I've got your back. Let's dive into the cultural side of things today. Malaga isn't just beaches and tapas, it's also the cultural heartbeat of Andalusia with close to 30 museums waiting to be explored. Whether you're into art, history, or just cool new spots, here's a quick list of museums to check out. First up, let's roll into Picasso's birthplace. Yeah, that Picasso. Born in 1881, this place isn't just walls and windows. You step right into his life, hear some stories, and even get up close with his personal goodies. Now, if you're craving more of Picasso, the Pablo Picasso Museum has got you covered. Imagine over 200 pieces by the master himself. It's like walking straight into his imagination. But hey, Spain isn't just about Picasso. The Carmen Thyssen Malaga Museum, total must visit. Packed with Spanish and Andalusian paintings, it's a splash of color and history. And for a twist, let's hop over to the Pampado Cultural Center. If you're thinking, wait, isn't that in Paris? You're right, but Malaga's got its own cool sibling version. Brace yourself for some mind-blowing contemporary art. Oh, and guess what? There's a piece by Frida Kahlo. Yup, it's that cool. Atadas on us. When you're out and about discovering new places like Spain, Sicily, or Greece, isn't it super fun to dive into local markets? They're like treasure chests bursting with cool finds. The Atatazanas market isn't just any market, it's tucked inside a super cool 19th century building with these dazzling stained glass windows. Once you've stepped inside, bam, you're greeted by a vibrant world of fresh fruits, veggies, and ooh, the Spain treats. We're talking delish charcuterie and cheeses. And hey, if you're feeling peckish, there are tapas bars right near the entrance where you can munch on some fresh goodies from the market. So you can shop, eat, and repeat. Remember, it's open from 8 in the morning till 2 in the afternoon, but heads up, it's closed on Sundays. So mark your calendar and make sure you don't miss out on this gem while you're in Malaga. The Soho District if you no longer know what to do in Malaga, head straight to the Soho district. It's not just another neighborhood, it's a canvas that comes to life with street art. Once a forgotten part of the city, Soho's now popping thanks to some super talented street artists who've turned its walls into their masterpiece. And we're not talking about tiny doodles. Some of these art pieces are as tall as the buildings themselves. It's like an outdoor museum! While you're there, don't forget to explore around the Contemporary Art Museum. That's where the magic really begins. Streets near the museum are literally exploding with color and creativity. And hey, it's not just about the art. If you've got a keen eye for unique crafts or you're a foodie on the lookout for some global flavors, Soho's got you covered. Dive into those artsy boutiques, galleries, and ooh, those trendy bars. They're a must visit. Conception Botanical Garden Welcome to one of Spain's hidden gems, the Botanical Garden. Not only is it huge, like seriously 250,000 meters squared kind of huge, but it's also home to over 2,000 different species of plants and trees. This isn't just any regular garden, folks. It's one of the largest tropical and subtropical gardens in the whole of Europe. Swap those city vibes for some green therapy? Trust me, a walk here is the perfect way to refresh. And if you're in Malaga, you gotta put this on your to-do list. Where to eat in Malaga Buena Vista Gastro Bar and Tapas Just a stone's throw away from Plaza de la Merced, this place serves up tapas like you've never seen before. And if you're a Pela fan, they've got you covered. Plus, the friendly staff will make sure you're having a blast. Just a heads up though, it gets pretty packed, so maybe ring them up to book a spot. 
Now, if you're like me and you're always on the lookout for local hidden gems, then La Proa di Titanos is the spot. It's not your typical touristy place and offers some amazing dishes without burning a hole in your pocket. And yes, their pela, absolutely killer. But for all you meat lovers, make a pit stop at Pampa Grill Restaurant Argentino. Near Plaza Spinola and just a quick walk from the cathedral, they serve the juiciest meat you could dream of. Trust me, it's every carnivore's dream. So there you have it guys, three must visit eateries in Malaga. Don't just take my word for it, check them out and let the foodie adventure begin. Alright adventurers, that's a wrap for our epic two day journey through Malaga. If this has got you dreaming of more Spanish escapades, don't miss out on our other video covering the best spots across Spain. Dive in, get inspired, and remember, every journey starts with a single step. Hit that subscribe button, share your Malaga moments in the comments, and I'll see you on the next adventure. Safe travels and keep exploring!